Knicks Nation. Today is Monday, the 21st day of October 2024, and the Knicks season starts tomorrow night. We're excited about that. I hope you're all safe and healthy. I hope you had a good weekend, and I hope your family is safe and healthy and had a good weekend, and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field alongside the first responders who are every day trying their best to save lives. Those also that pick up garbage to keep our places clean and those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women out here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People that are also victims of pornography and child pornography, prostitution, child prostitution, human trafficking, sex slavery, double curses on all the perpetrators of these things, double curses on those who make profits from these things, and double curses on the perverts that create the demands for these industries. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. More than 600,000 men, women, children, families, veterans, senior citizens, homeless, in the United States of America. Millions around the world in even worse conditions. Blessings upon them. For theirs is the kingdom. I want to talk today. Today, this, this year is special for the New York Knicks in that we're starting this season talking about a championship. That's very rare. I mean, in real terms, in terms of the broad-based people that understand pro basketball in terms of, I mean, we always have people in the Knicks nation that believe, but there's a, a lot broader base understanding and opinion that the Knicks are a championship contender right now. The thing is, in the league, you need elements of players to win a championship. You need veterans. You need a lot of talent. You need a little luck. Okay, you need good health to win an NBA championship so that when the season starts, let's call it championship team X. It could be any team. Last year was the Celtics. If you were to start the season and you're saying the Knicks are trying to win a championship and they got Jalen Brunson starting at their point guard, you would think if you if you have any knowledge of the game that, OK, that's a good place to start. If you said they had McCall Bridges, OG and OB healthy with Carl Anthony Towns healthy and they're starting, you would think, yes, that, that's a good place to start for a championship team. And they would have a glue guy that's not a big scorer, but a high energy guy, veteran in his prime, Josh Hart. You would say, OK, that makes sense. Glue guy doesn't need the basketball. High IQ guy plays with a lot of motor, a lot of energy. That's a nice starting five. But you need a bench. If you were to say, okay, coming off my bench at the five behind Towns is going to be Mitchell Robinson, which is one of the top offensive rebounders in all of basketball. You say, okay, that's a good start. My, my power forward backup is Precious Achua. My, 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 my guard backup is Deuce McBride. And I also have Cameron Payne. And I'll have a healthy Landry Shamit. You would look at that and say, yes, that's a good roster that can make a run for a championship, okay? If I was to say to you, though, you're going to have a rookie drafted at 58 and you're going to depend on him for the championship, you'd be like, mm, I don't think so. Or another rookie drafted at 34 at point guard and you're going to depend on him for a championship, no, I, I don't think so. Th that wouldn't be who you'd be looking at. Or a 19-year-old rookie out of the French League Drafted at the end of the first round. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think you'd be looking at a championship. And why am I mentioning this? Because if the Knicks are serious, and they are, and they are a serious contender, you cannot realistically expect, and I've heard even this weekend, people calling for Daddy A to start because he hit a few jump shots in preseason. No. You don't win a championship starting a 19-year-old or even having him in the rotation. Or who party drafted 58 or even Tyler Kolick, probably the most talented guard of them all, of those three, 
you're not going to play the major minutes and expect to be in the NBA championship, the hardest league in the world. Okay? It, no. Now, will you play them some minutes? Yes. They can fill in in some spots, like who Porty's going to be filling in for the next four weeks in the absence of Precious Achua, but you know you're going to need Precious Achua back for the long run. Okay? And you're going to need Mitchell Robinson to come back in January for the stretch run. And you're going to need Landry Shamit and his shooting to come back. Last Friday night, Deuce was not dressed, and it was reported that it was an undisclosed uh, uh, reason, and that's not true. I actually looked at the game. Kenny Albert found out during the course of the game that they purposely did not dress Deuce to rest him. Because Deuce is going to play a lot of minutes. He's a major piece for the rotation. Okay? And he's going to play both guard spots in the rotation. Then you're going to have also, of course, Cameron Payne. He's a point guard. He's going to do that. Then you're going to have Brunson. So you're going to have Brunson, Payne, and Deuce rotating at the point guard spot. And then Deuce playing more minutes at the off guard spot. Okay? So he, they're arresting him. Expecting a big year from Deuce because he's got the talent and we've been talking about him now. This is his fourth season for three years now, okay? And he's been developing the way Tom Thibodeau develops his rookies. That's how he does it. Some of y'all still ain't got the memo. That's how he does his development. So Deuce is going to play a key role with the starting five. We're going to need Precious Achua to come back healthy. And I'm glad Precious put out a video over the weekend to say this is no big deal in terms of his left hamstring. This is just a minor setback is the way he described it. He said, we're going to come back stronger than ever. Don't worry. And that's good for him to say to Knicks Nation because many people get clicks off of drama and they use stuff like that as the drama to, to create the catnip for those that really love that stuff and start tripping. Somebody actually put, oh, I think it's time to worry. We got, we, we, they called McCall Bridges, Bill Cartwright, because he changed his jump shot. This is how stupid and immature some people are. But I'm glad the majority of Knicks Nation are not that stupid to go for that okie doke 15-year-old childish crap. The Knicks are going to be in compete for the chip this year. And it's a serious thing. And I'm glad we got what we got in our starting opening night against the Boston Celtics. We have to understand something, brethren. Tom Thibodeau's teams usually start slower than they finish, which is actually a very good thing. You want to be playing your best basketball in April and May and June. That's when you want to. And that's generally when Tom Thibodeau coached teams play their best basketball. They usually play their worst basketball at the beginning of the season. They're getting acclimated. This is a new team. So last year, you had Brunson, Hart, and Ananobi that played together at least part of the year. But Carl Anthony Towns and McCall Bridges are new to this team. Okay, Precious Achua, he really came through the second half of last year after the trade. Wasn't no throw in. He's ready to come. He's got he's got his um, one year deal here, six million dollars, um, and he's gonna be a terrific power forward and center coming off the bench for the Knicks until Mitchell Robinson returns. Of course, you mentioned Deuce, and then you're going to have, we know also, of course, Cameron Payne and Landry Shamit. Now, for now, Payne is going to be able to fill in. So you're going to really have a nice eight-man rotation with Deuce, Payne, and um, Sims, Jericho Sims. And another thing about Jericho Sims, I'm tired of some of y'all. Some of y'all going to get, you know, you're really cutting on that third rail. I had some idiot come on my channel. You know, Sims is not as good as you think he is. Let me, again, explain this to y'all. It's not about how good I think Sims is. Sims is good enough to be an NBA center. That's saying something right there. He's in the league, number one. Number two, this is his fourth season. And he has earned the right to get the benefit of the doubt from those claiming to be Knicks fans to get his shot at stardom as close as he could get to it and making his money. If he fails, he fails. But I'm not going to speak into existence like some of you idiots that he's going to fail. 
I got his back. It's a shame, yo, really, that we, every year we got to go through this with, with a section of Knicks Nation that claim to be fans. You, I got to tell you to keep the coaches back. Every year somebody claiming that they want to fire Tibbs. Or, I haven't had people talk about firing the Don and he ain't no Don until now. Not everybody's on board now. But with respect to Sims, I got his back. I hope he succeeds. No, he's not as good as the other people we've seen. But he has, the point again is, not how good he is, that he has earned his chance to play good minutes in the second unit. He has earned his shot. And we should have his back. And I don't have patience for nobody that doesn't. I don't. You come on my channel, you're going to get cut. You're going to get got. Don't come on my channel with that. I got Sims back. And everybody else that got his back, you're welcome. But I got his back and he's earned his shot. Whether he fails, whether he falls on his face, whether he sinks or swims, we should be pulling for him because he has earned his shot. And so we're talking about Sims, Deuce, Cameron Payne, and eventually we'll be dealing with Precious Achua again. But that's who you got. But for now, you're going to have Hoop Porty, a rookie. Drafted 58. Some of y'all forget that. I know the boy got some talent, but he was drafted 58th. Okay? So, yes, it's we got Mark Bryant working with him. The Knicks got a really good backup staff, you know, with Dice and Mark Bryant and Mo Cheeks, the whole nine. And then, of course, you got Tom Thibodeau and all of the crew working with him. So, yes, he's got a good culture, an excellent organization, an excellent coach and staff working with him. But don't expect too much out of this kid right now. It's not fair to him at all, and it's unrealistic. We just hope he can step in for a few minutes and give us some good minutes. If he could do that, that's great. And if he does better than that, that's even better. But we shouldn't expect it right now. He's a rookie in one of the two hardest positions to learn in the league, the five spot. See, it's more than just jumping all over the place and being athletic. You got to call out the defenses. You got, Tom Tibbet just said it, in fact, over the weekend. You got to know your opponent. What are their tendencies? What do they like to run? How do they like to run it? You got to be, the center's got to know all that. And you got to call it out. Okay? I'm not saying who Porty can't do it, but y'all should understand, there's a lot of athletic centers that don't make it because they can't do that. Okay? When, when the Knicks brought in DeAndre Jordan, it was to teach Mitchell Robinson that, which he learned. Now it's who Porty's turn. Okay? Got to give him his time. Now we're going to need him for a few minutes a game now to fill in. But that's going to be a detriment because he's a rookie. Okay? You're going to see stupid fouls. You're going to see him, you know, get fooled a lot on defense. It happened in Washington uh, the other night. You started seeing Kolick. You start seeing who Porty. You saw Daddy A get beat. They got beat badly on backdoor plays that a veteran wouldn't get beat on, but they are rookies. That's what's going to happen. That's why Tibbs don't like playing rookies, especially because of his defensive philosophy. He's not tolerant of getting beat backdoor, of lack of a motor, of, of getting fooled by an offense. He's not tolerant of that because he's expecting you to know your opponent. And these rookies are just learning that. Okay, so yes, we're going to have to use Coop Party for at least a month. Well, probably a maximum of a month, I think, until Precious comes back. Yeah, but this is our championship year. This is the year we're trying to run this table here. So we got to be strategic here. So, yeah, we got to use Coop Party beginning. But don't start looking at these rookies as if you got to depend on them because you ain't winning no championship depending on rookies, especially three of them. That ain't going to happen. We do hope that they get a lot of minutes in the G League so they can develop their craft and learn what, what Tibbs expects, which I know that they probably know by now. Okay, but it's it's good. So, the, and the Don has done it again. This cat should have been executive of the year two years ago, but this year for real, if he's not executive of the year, this is fixed because he needs to be. He just got three rookies, uh, two of them in the second round, one of them at the end of the first round and underpaid him. He paid the minimum that a rookie could get. He didn't even get the maximum. And they got three good guys for the future. That's the Don right there. Okay. And then we don't even know what McCullough will bring if he's able to recover from his knee injury and come back strong. 
Uh, we'll find out in the G League, you know, this year for him. Hopefully, my, my thought would be for next summer for McCullough to really, that would be his real rookie year next summer. And hopefully he's recovered and, and can recover. It's not a guarantee. We don't even know how bad the injury is. But I'm looking for him next summer to play uh, in the summer league and to show what he got. But for a championship team, the season starts tomorrow against Boston. Um, and again, it's one game of 82, one way or another. It just kind of gives us a litmus of where we're at against what's considered the top team in the Eastern Conference and the defending champion, Boston Celtics. So we'll get a good litmus of where we are and what we can do and what we're capable of tomorrow night um, you know, in Boston. Carl Anthony Towns, uh, to me, shot too many threes against Washington. And when I say shoot too many threes, it wasn't, it was, he was forcing them a little bit. If you got to open three, Tibbs wants you to shoot it. But he was forcing it a little bit, I felt like. Now, eventually, he'll figure it out. I know that. He's going to figure it out. He's a 40% shooter from three. He's going to figure it out. He's going to take good shots. Eventually, that's going to happen. That's why I'm saying, let's be easy in this first 25, 30 games. Let them figure it out. Brunson's going to figure out how to use him better. Bridges is struggling with his shot. Okay. It ain't the end of the world, though. This is a really good player we got right here. Championship piece. He'll figure it out. OG's already good. We just don't want him to get hurt. <laughs> That's it. We just don't want him to get hurt. And Josh Hart's going to always bring what he has. Heart, effort, motor. He's always going to do that. And he's a glue guy. He's a very high-level IQ basketball player. He may not score a lot, but we don't need him. He's not out there to do that. Okay? So, and of course, Deuce, I'm really feeling like Deuce is going to average at least 15 points a game, maybe 17 or 18, but he'll average at least 15 during the course of the season. Once he gets used to these minutes, and he already knows he's going to get a lot of minutes, so every game is not like it used to be with Deuce where you didn't know if he was going to play one minute, minute 30, or 20 minutes. No, he's playing every night 20 minutes this year or more. So you're going to see him get used to that, and with that, you're going to start seeing that three-point jump will fall pretty regularly. Okay, with him. And so, uh, yeah, and then, of course, the 94-foot defense. So it's going to be a big year for Deuce McBride, in my opinion. I just need, you know, he's pretty healthy. He's a tough kid. So um, he's got Marcus Smart, you know, toughness to him, as we know. So we expect him to be healthy most of the year, but hopefully. Let's speak too soon. And then, of course, we know we're going to have Precious coming back, and he's going to be good, too. So. This is this is the beginning, y'all. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a big year for us. This is a big year. This is a champion. We're looking at really minimum Eastern Conference Finals. Okay, that's what we're looking at now. Eastern Conference Finals, and hopefully NBA Finals. Y'all enjoy your Monday. Sure.